Today, I'm gonna to be cooking up with Fax Only, who's a Grammy-nominated producer who's worked with Drake, Freddie Gibbs, J. Cole, Lil Uzi, Baby Keem, and so many more. In this video, he's gonna make two beats flipping vintage samples, and he's gonna go over a bunch of gems on how you can level up your career as a producer and make better beats. So without wasting any more time, let's hop right into it. All right, so I got a ton of these vintage-sounding samples from my new Vintage Essentials kit, and then just let me know whenever you like one of them. Uh, real quick, what kind of vibes are you feeling today? It don't really matter, bro. You know how I am. You can play something and I'll just cook it, bro. I bet. Some old boom back. Yeah, that, that one. 100%. You want that one? All right, let me break this one down real quick. All right, so whenever I made this sample, the first thing I started with was this piano. And I actually recorded that live on my upright piano. Next thing I did is I just followed the, the root notes of the piano progression with the bass VST, Scarby Rickenbacker bass. Nothing crazy here. And then after that, I grabbed this organ, the UID Waterfall B3 organ, and I played in the chords just on an organ. As you can see, I'm automating the modulation, which makes the rotary cabinet like spin faster. So once I had that, it was pretty much like the foundation is pretty much there. Like with these gospel samples, you want to keep it kind of simple. And then I just added some drums. Just to make it sound like it's like a real sample. And then after that, that's where I went in and I wrote my own vocals. First thing I did is I just, I came up with like a top line that I was hearing with my vocals. <laughs> Oh, wait, that's the, uh, that's the, <laughs> that's the top, top line. But yeah, so obviously my voice, you know, is not working if I want this to sound like a real, like, gospel sample. Oh, whoa. So then I layered in some harmonies. Man, you went crazy though. After I had that idea, obviously I want this shit to sound like a real like record. So I hired a vocalist. I just gave her my idea and told her to re-sing what I had already written. And then I layered my vocals in with it, but just way lower in volume so that it sounds like male and female vocals. So it sounds like a real choir. And then boom, I ran everything through the tape machine and you get this. So now I'm gonna send it over to Fax and let's see what he could do with this. First question I got for you is like, whenever you pull up a sample, what are the first things that go through your head whenever you're gonna flip a sample? I'm listening to everything. I'm listening to the parts that I wanna chop. Damn, that part right there is crazy. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, it's slower. So I'm, I'm gonna speed this joint up. You like to listen through the whole sample and find like little parts that you wanna chop? Yeah. I also like to find to see if there's a little break from the vocals and stuff like that so it can breathe a little bit. I like the picture too, to, to, to feel a different vibe. Do you use drum brakes at all or do you make your own? I do. I really like to use drum brakes and like flip them into my own. But this one, I think I'm gonna make my own drums. For anyone who doesn't know, I met Fax in Atlanta. We were both at a, a Sony conference and we were just in the elevator. He was like, are you out here for the Sony thing? I was like, oh yeah, whatever. We gave each other like Instagram and numbers and shit. And then I looked at his profile. I was like, bro, this dude produced Pipe Down. That's like my favorite <laughs> Drake song. What the fuck? But yeah, so later that night we went to the Sony studios and we were cooking up. You were making like crazy like live drum patterns with like no drum brakes. 
breaks just like on the spot so like what is it about your process like making drums you think is different i mean uh thankfully like i come from a pretty musical family my pop he he played the drums and shit so i kind of have a little edge over like the bouncing like the drums and and, and the fills and stuff like that I like to to make it sound like realistic too, you know what I mean? So I like to mess with the modulation, the velocity. So right now I'm just I kind of know what I what I wanted to sound like. I'm going to make it simple right now, you know what I mean? Just to keep the pocket. And then I like to come back to it and I'll add some other stuff just to make it sound good. It's low key done. So hold on. But I, what I'm gonna do is I want to see how it sounds sped up a little bit. Then right now I'll just go done because it's more swing. Oh, so you you like purposely put it off the grid? I do. I do. Real quick, before Fax goes in and finishes this beat, I want to tell you about something crazy. I just dropped my brand new kit, Vintage Essentials, which comes with over 5,000 vintage sounds inside of it. If you like the samples that you've been hearing in this video so far, almost all of them are from the kit. The melodies are all from the kit. Almost all the drum sounds are from the kit. We got vocals in there, live instrument phrases, presets, MIDI, everything you can need. If you like that vintage sampled Kanye West, J. Cole, Drake kind of sound. And to thank you for being a viewer on the channel, if you use the code FAX, facts you can get 30 percent off on the first link in the description just put that code in at checkout but anyways back into the video so you did uh you did pipe down like i said earlier is one of my favorite drake songs like all-time favorite drake songs you already told me this story whenever we were in person but how did you actually get that that beat to drake i think it was, uh, it was around 2020 i was working with an artist her name was Aliyah kadir so we were locked in and she was real cool with leon at, at the time leon thomas right leon thomas yeah so uh, i guess leon he heard some of the some of the beats that i was sending to her and he was like yo who is making these beats bro Aaliyah called me she was like hey somebody wants to speak to you and it was leon thomas mind you i'm not lying when i tell you bro i did not know leon Tom i didn't watch victorious so i didn't know who leon thomas really was but anyway long story short we were locked in we were sending each other music he calls me randomly he's like yo bro we got a drake cut i'm like are you dead serious <laughs> he was like yo i'm dead serious bro we got a drake cut i'm like oh shit maybe six seven eight months later it came out bro i was like wow I'm super thankful. I'm super thankful for Leon too, man. Shout out to the uh, OVO team. Shout out to everybody over there. What was it like first time you heard? A week before it came out is when I actually found out. But at that time, my anticipation for it had already kind of it fizzled out because I'm like, oh, he is using it. All right, but it's kind of over. And it dropped. I'm not lying to you. I was excited, but I was like, it's on to the next one. Cause now it's like, damn, okay. So I got to go crazier. How did that cut affect like your career? Like just like networking and shit like that. People respect my craft a little bit more once that Drake cut came out. Cause it was like, okay, facts really, you know what I mean? Like he got a Drake cut. After the pipe down record drop, J. Cole got on that like right after. How did that happen? I'm not gonna lie. That was probably the craziest shit ever, bro. Freaking, I'm in Atlanta for uh G Herbo. We were working on uh, the record we did, uh Fuck With Me. And uh, my AR Adrian walked in the room. He didn't say anything. He just literally showed me his phone. And it was an article that uh J. Cole did uh pipe down called Heaven's EP. And mind you, I'm trying to keep my composure because I'm around a whole bunch of people. So I just walked out calmly and was just like Adrian. Like, is this for real? He was like, bro, this motherfucker cut. It did a remix to pipe down. I has the money water me down. That truth is hard for me. When that happened, it was like, damn, like, I'm really doing this shit. I'm really in this music shit. Probably top five best feelings I ever had while doing this music shit.
Are you down to cook up another one, or you got something to do? Hell yeah, bro. Let's cook, bro. I feel like this was the warm up one. You know what I mean? This is the warm up. All right, so we're gonna go back through some samples real quick. We're gonna make a second beat on this one. Oh, oh, oh. I love these gospel ones. Can we do this one? Please. Can we do this one, please? This one? Yes, please, please. So what's your go-to like method for chopping up like if you wanna actually chop up and like make your own pattern with it? I like obviously I like to take the uh the beginning here. I mean it all depends. You said it changes up too, so let me listen to it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm doing this part. Oh my gosh, boy. What you got going on over there, man? What is wrong with you, bro? So how do you get most of your placements? Are you a producer who gets most of them like in the studio, in person with the artist, or are most of your cuts like you just sending stuff online or like texting people? I would say uh, my biggest cuts have been through sending through people. Some of them like Herbo, I was in a session with him. Mainly all the other cuts are like, I just send them, send them out. So if you were to give advice to like a, an up and coming producer on like, if you're sending stuff out, how do you actually network and meet the right people? It's just about getting outside. It's nothing wrong with being like a, a bedroom producer. It's nothing wrong with that. Cause that's where I started at. But like, once you start getting outside and start meeting these people and meeting these connects, I mean, I started where everybody else started. You feel me? Like, I think the biggest thing of where I started was reaching out to people that I know knows this person. You feel me? It's six degrees of separation or five degrees the separation i started off knowing dj brand and uh he was meek mills dj it just so happens he's from the same state as i am and he fucked with me for that so i would figure out where he's djing at you feel me i, I found out he was djing in boston so i drove all the way to boston you know what i'm saying like, like i knew if i went and i hit him up and be like yo I'm, I'm coming to boston he would make sure i was straight so that's how that connection like just being in the room not necessarily being in the studio session but being around the people that are in the studio session. You feel what I'm saying? Just get around. So what I'm about to do now, I'm gonna record the chops that I made. I like to do it that way so that I can just have it on one thing. What are some low key or secret like VSTs or effects plugins that you've been using recently? The only VST that I mean, I guess would be crazy is uh, the FB3100. I like the sounds on What drum banks do you use? Cause I love your like your live drums. What contact banks do you use to make your live drums? I use the 60 drummers, Abbey Road. That's really it, bro. I'm really a very simple producer, bro. Ooh. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, we good. Let's go home. What's a big mistake you see a bunch of up and coming producers making? Young producers have to realize, and not not all of them. This shit takes a lot of time, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Seriously, though, like a lot of tears. So I feel like having that in mind as a young producer, knowing that like it's not gonna come overnight and that it's gonna take real grind, I think will set you apart because people peep that that oh yeah, this dude he really wants this shit. Like he really loves this shit. He really loves the music. It's cool to be unique. It's cool to be different and really love this shit. 
shit. Like, really fall in love with it. I think one last question. If you had one tip for upcoming music producers to, like, make their music better as fast as they can, what would you say is the best thing they can do? Studying and, like, observing how producers make beats and, like, really studying the craft and, like, diving into different genres, too. Listen to some jazz. Listen to some, I don't know, some soul R&B. Listen to some rock here and there. You feel me? Listen to some pop. Go back and listen to some Katy Perry. Listen to how Lady Gaga had that shit on lock for a while. And when you tie all those genres together and you just continue to practice and make beats and make beats, then your beats will get better. Guaranteed, because that's what I did. Another thing too, don't be sitting in the studio all day. Go outside, tuck some grass. Focus on your mental too, bro. And taking time for your family is a big thing and keep God in your life. Thanks for making it to the end of this one. Real quick, I just want to remind you to check out Vintage Essentials. It'll be the first link in the description down below. If you like the samples that he used in these beats, you are going to love this kit. And if you use that discount code FAX at checkout, you'll get 30% off. Anyways, I'll catch y'all. Peace.